Let us proceed to the head or the human skull which is the part of the skeleton that supports the structures of the face and forms a cavity for the brain. The composition of the skull comprised of 22 bones which are divided into two parts of differing embryological origin, the neurocranium and the cranium. The neurocranium forms the cranial cavity that surrounds and protects the brain and brain stem. The neurocranium is formed from the occipital bone, two temporal bones, two parietal bones, the sphenoid, ethmoid and frontal bones. They are all joined together with sutures. The visceracranium bones form the anterior and lower regions of the skull and include the mandible, which attaches through the only truly modal joint found in the skull. The facial skeleton contains the vomer, two nasal conge, two nasal bones, two maxilla, the mandible, two palatine bones, two zygomatic bones, and two lacrimal bones. The skull also contains the sinuses. These are air-filled cavities that contribute to lessening the weight of the skull with a minimal reduction in strength. They contribute to resonance of the voice and assist in the warming and moistening of air inhaled via the nose. The occipital bone forms the base of the skull at the rear of the cranium. It articulates with the first vertebra of the spinal cord and also contains the foramen magnum, the large opening of the scale through which the spinal cord passes as it enters the vertebral column. The occipital bone borders the parietal bones through the heavily serrated lambdoidal suture, and also the temporal bones through occipitomastoid suture. The temporal bones are situated at the base and sides of the skull, lateral to the temporal lobes of the brain. The temporal bones consist of four regions the squamous, mastoid, petrous and tympanic regions. The squamous region is the largest and most superior region. Inferior to the squamous is the mastoid region and fused between the squamous and mastoid regions is the petrous region. Finally, the small and inferior tympanic region lies anteriorly to the mastoid. The occipital bone forms the base of the skull at the rear of the cranium. It articulates with the first vertebra of the spinal cord and also contains the foramen magnum, the large opening of the scale through which the spinal cord passes as it enters the vertebral column. The occipital bone borders the parietal bones through the heavily serrated lambdoidal suture, and also the temporal bones through occipitomastoid suture. The temporal bones are situated at the base and sides of the skull, lateral to the temporal lobes of the brain. The temporal bones consist of four regions the squamous, mastoid, petrous and tympanic regions. The squamous region is the largest and most superior region. Inferior to the squamous is the mastoid region, and fused between the squamous and mastoid regions is the petrous region. Finally, the small and inferior tympanic region lies anteriorly to the mastoid there are two processes that originate from the temporal bone, the zygomatic process that projects from the lower squamous region and articulates with the zygomatic bone of the cheek. The styloid process projects downwards from the interior of the temporal bone and provides attachment for several muscles associated with the tongue, elbow and mastoid portion of temporal bone. The squamosal suture separates the parietal bone and squamous portion of temporal bone. The sphenosquamosal suture separates the sphenoid bone and squamous portion of temporal bone. The zygomatic temporal suture separates the zygomatic bone and zygomatic process of temporal bone. The two large parietal bones are connected and make up part of the roof and sides of the human skull. The two bones articulate to form the sagittal suture. In the front, 
The parietal bones form the coronal suture with the frontal bone, and in the rear, the lemdoid suture is formed by the occipital bone. Finally, the squamosal suture separates the parietal and temporal bones. The sphenoid bone is situated in the middle of the skull towards the front and forms the rear of the orbit. It has been described as resembling a butterfly due to its wing-like processes. The sphenoid bone is divided into several parts, the body of the bone, two greater wings, two lesser wings, and the trachoid processes. The sphenoid bone is one of the most complex in the body due to its interactions with numerous facial bones, ligaments, and muscles. The body that forms the middle of the sphenoid bone articulates with the ethmoid and occipital bone and forms a key part of the nasal cavity. It also contains the sphenoidal sinuses. The greater wings form the floor of the middle cranial fossa that houses the frontal lobes and pituitary gland, and also the posterior wall of the orbit. The lesser wings project laterally and form the floor of the anterior cranial fossa and the superior orbital fissure through which several key optical nerves pass. The ethmoid bone is a small bone in the skull that separates the nasal cavity from the brain. It is lightweight due to its spongy, air-filled construction and is located at the roof of the nose and between the two orbits. The ethmoid bone forms the medial wall of the orbit, the roof of the nasal cavity, and due to its central location it articulates with numerous bones of the visceral cranium. Inside the neurocranium it articulates with the frontal and sphenoid bones. The frontal bone forms the front of the skull and is divided into three parts. Squamous this part is large and flat and forms the main region of the forehead. Orbital, this part lies inferiorly and forms the superior border of the orbit. Nasal, this part is smaller and articulates with the nasal bones and maxilla to contribute to the roof of the nose. The frontal bone borders two other neurocranial bones a year of the parietal bones through the coronal sutures and the sphenoid bone through the spinifrontal suture. It also articulates with the zygomatic and nasal bones and the maxilla. For the facial bones, the visceral cranium or face includes these bones, vomer, two inferior nasal congee, two nasals, Maxilla, mandible, palatine, two zygomatics, and two lacrimals. The visor cranium, the visceral cranium or facial bone supports the soft tissue of the face. The visceral cranium consists of 14 individual bones that fuse together. However, the hyoid bone, ethmoid bone, and sphenoid bones are sometimes included in the visceral cranium. Zygomatic bones, the two zygomatic bones form the cheeks and contribute to the orbits. They articulate with the frontal, temporal, maxilla, and sphenoid bones. Lacrimal bones, the two lacrimal bones form the medial wall of the orbit and articulate with the frontal, ethmoid, maxilla, and inferior nasal congee. The lacrimal bones are the two smallest bones located in the face. Nasal bones, the two slender nasal bones located in the midline of the face fuse to form the bridge of the noise and also articulate with the frontal, ethmoid and maxilla bones. The inferior nasal conchae are located within the nasal cavity. They are spongy and curled in shape. Their primary function is to increase the surface area of the nasal cavity, which also increases the amount of air that contacts the mucous membranes and cilia of the nose, thus filtering, warming, and humidifying the air before it enters the lungs. At the base of the nasal cavity is the small vomer bone which forms the nasal septum. Maxilla bones 
the maxilla bones fuse in the midline and form the upper jaw. They provide the bed for the upper teeth, the floor of the nose, and the base of the orbits. The maxilla articulates with the zygomatic, nasal, lacrimal, and palatine bones. Palatine bones. The palatine bones fuse in the midline to form the palatine, located at the back of the nasal cavity that forms the roof of the mouth and the floor of the orbit. The mandible. Finally, the mandible forms the lower jaw of the skull. The joint between the amandibly and the temporal bones of the neurocranium, known as the temporomandibular joint, forms the only non-sutured joint in the skull. The orbit is the cavity or socket of the skull in which the eye and its appendages are situated. The orbital cavity is formed from seven bones. The frontal bone forms the superior border of the orbital rim and also the superior wall, roof, of the orbital surface. The zygomatic bone forms the lateral, and half of the basal, border of the orbital rim, and also the lateral wall of the orbital surface. Here, this is the thickest region of the orbit as it is most exposed to external trauma. Completing the basal and medial border of the orbital rim is the maxillary bone, which also forms the inferior wall, floor, of the orbital surface. The lacrimal and ethmoid bones contribute to the medial wall of the orbit and also to the medial wall of the orbital canal. This small palatine bone contributes to the floor of the orbit. Finally, the sphenoid bone forms the posterior wall of the orbit and also contributes to the formation of the optic canal. In anatomy, a foramen is any opening. Formina inside the body of humans and other animals typically allow muscles, nerves, arteries, veins, or other structures to connect one part of the body with another. The human skull has numerous formina through which cranial nerves, arteries, veins, and other structures pass. The skull bones that contain formina include the frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, Maxilla, palatine, temporal, and occipital lobes. Key formina in the skull include supraorbital foramen, located in the frontal bone. It allows passage of the supraorbital vein, artery, and nerve into the orbit. Optic foramen, located in the sphenoid. It allows the passage of the ophthalmic artery and nerve from the optic canal into the orbit. Foramen magnum, located in the occipital bone, it allows the passage of the spinal and vertebral arteries and the spinal cord to pass from the skull into the vertebral column. Foramina of cribriform plate, located in the ethmoid bone, it allows the passage of the olfactory nerve. Foramen rotundum, located in the sphenoid bone, it allows passage of the maxillary nerve. Sutures. A suture is a type of fibrous joint, or synarthrosis, that only occurs in the skull, or cranium. A suture is a type of fibrous joint, or synarthrosis, that only occurs in the skull. The bones are bound together by Sharpie's fibers, a matrix of connective tissue which provide a firm joint. A small amount of movement is permitted through these sutures that contributes to the compliance and elasticity of the skull. The joint between the amandibly and the cranium, known as the temporomandibular joint, forms the only non-sutured joint in the skull. Most sutures are named for the bones that they articulate. At birth, Many of the bones of the skull remain unfused to the soft spots described as fontanelle. The bones fuse relatively rapidly through a process known as craniosynotosis, although the relative positions of the bones can continue to change through life. In old age the cranial sutures may ossify completely, 
reducing the amount of elasticity present in the skull. As such, the degree of ossification can be a useful tool in determining age post-mortem. The spine is made of 33 individual bones stacked one on top of the other. This spinal column provides the main support for your body, allowing you to stand upright, bend, and twist while protecting the spinal cord from injury. Strong muscles and bones, flexible tendons and ligaments, and sensitive nerves contribute to a healthy spine. Yet, any of these structures affected by strain, injury, or disease can cause pain. Spinal Curves When viewed from the side, an adult spine has a natural S-shaped curve. The neck, cervical, and low back, lumbar, regions have a slight concave curve, and the thoracic and sacral regions have a gentle convex curve. The curves work like a coiled spring to absorb shock, maintain balance, and allow range of motion throughout the spinal column. The abdominal and back muscles maintain the spine's natural curves. Good posture involves training your body to stand, walk, sit, and lie so that the least amount of strain is placed on the spine during movement or weight-bearing activities. Excess body weight, weak muscles, and other forces can pull at the spine's alignment. An abnormal curve of the lumbar spine is lordosis, also called sway back. An abnormal curve